Hi there, welcome to the video. My name's Warlight Ref, and I will be responding back to Polish Girl in Vegas, an individual on YouTube that has called me out in recent time, demands answers, and roughly wants to know why I'm supporting Jim Terry in some way or another. To some people, that may sound ridiculous. Is this another, another Kathy and Axel situation of false accusations and an impetuous attitude? Well, we'll get to the bottom of it today. I just want to do this formal response video today just to explain and just to respond. There's no harm in doing so. As for everybody watching right now in this live premiere, welcome. Be sure to share your thoughts, opinions, reactions in the live chat box on the right hand side of the screen. If you want to elaborate, you have any questions, and this can apply to anyone and everyone watching on catch up later, etc. Leave your comments down below under this video. If you have any grievances, you can list them too, and maybe with time one can respond back to them. So it's all under control there. If any others are interested in my recent coverage on more important serious topics and cases besides this, top right corner of the screen, click on the eye symbol and you'll be directed to videos you may need to catch up on. Feel free to do that in your own free time. But right now, we've got some serious focus. Before we go any further, I just want to say shout out to Watcher Crazy for her support last night. It was very good of her. And yeah, so to make things extremely clear, this is a formal video and I would advise and appreciate if anyone and everyone watching over time with this video pays a level of focus to understand what's at hand here, whether it be directly my response to the situation or the actual person calling me out in the first place, okay? I'm gonna try and give a backstory in brief as to what's happened, how it's happened, does it originate from something, etc., and then we can go from there. I, I will talk first, then transition on over to Polish girl, in Vegas post on YouTube, analyze that, respond, and then some final thoughts later. So it would be appreciated if you watch from start to finish to understand this video, and I guess specifically applying to Polish girl, if you are watching this, well, make sure to watch from start to finish so you understand what's going on, okay? Apologies about the hair, if it is a bit messy, did some exercise before and got straight into this video, okay? So it's now time to begin. So, this all started yesterday, okay? Towards the evening UK time. And I noticed that I was mentioned, but I didn't get a notification because YouTube is a bit dodgy. I think I clicked on notifications to do with something else. I looked at mentions and then it mentioned my name on Polish Girl in Vegas. So I wondered why, what's that all about? Because I've never been tagged by that individual before, at least from what I can remember. Clicked on it, uh, some paragraphs going on and on and on about videos, things being deleted, removed from a playlist she created where she gathered all different videos aimed or topics about Jim Terry into one place and there was about 23 videos or something missing. And then she started tagging people like me, Zav Girl, you know who Zav Girl is, some other person, a reference to Johnny Yarborough, or Yarborough, however you say his name, and also mentioning YouTube creators, YouTube itself. Now, I don't think YouTube, YouTube creators are gonna respond back to a unknown individual on YouTube, right? At the best, YouTube don't even respond to me. Sometimes bigger channels, YouTube don't even respond to them. So you see the hierarchy of things, right? But yeah, a few names tagged and the attitude, the portrayal of Polish girl in Vegas, not too pleased, not in a good mood. 
and I did leave, you know, a comment saying, why have I been tagged in this? Because I don't surround myself with this type of stuff, right? I've responded back to things in the past, but I don't create the true disruption as what others do. And obviously, Polish girl in Vegas responded back and then to let me know what that what was on their mind. I'll read that out to you later. What I do want to highlight just before we go any further, in the past there was a brief spell where I did get mixed up, right, in the past, between Vegas girl and Polish girl in Vegas, right? It's kind of easy to get mixed up between the two. At one point I thought it was the same person, but they're two separate people. Vegas girl originated from the Kenny Veach case and eventually branched out and then was hovering in the Dylan Rounds true crime community. Polish girl in Vegas, I've never really heard of them before. I've not really encountered them much, okay? I've heard the name pop up here and there, the odd mention by others, and maybe the odd post or comment repost or something elsewhere, but I don't really know too much about the individual, okay? But in terms of this problem, this conflict, whatever you want to call it, it seemed to have originated from last night, okay, when I was dragged into it. Now, I am aware that some people out there, if not most of my regular viewers, will probably say you shouldn't have to answer or explain yourself to someone like that over there. And that's understandable too, right? I don't have to lower myself, I don't have to surround myself with certain people. But don't worry, it's all under control. There isn't any breaking news elsewhere with other cases. If there was, I would prioritise that over this. But not much is happening at this moment, so I'm making this video now and get it over and done with, okay? Simple as. I'm aware that in the background somewhere in the Kenny Veach case community, it's kind of exploded there. All kinds of things going on, I think, between J. Chuck, Atari, might have been resolved by now, who knows? But, you know, that doesn't involve me, really. So just leave that aside for now. Just focus on this at this moment. So, Polish girl in Vegas. With hearing the name here and there, 2022 onwards, I guess, within the Dylan Rounds community, within the true crime YouTube streets community in the presence of Salty Pancakes, the Bob Farrells, the Jim Terry's and all that. Not aligning themselves with each individual out there, but just in the presence at times and possibly on the receiving end, okay? Polish girl in Vegas, okay? So I guess they are Polish, but they live in the US. I want to make one thing very clear. Sasquatch, I know you said you're Polish, this video is not targeting you. This response isn't towards you. It's all under control. We're talking about a different person. Okay, Sasquatch? We're focusing on Polish girl in Vegas. A different individual. Another Polish person that lives in the US of Las Vegas, I assume. Okay? A different individual to Vegas girl, two separate people. Just want to make that very clear. There'll be people on my channel who don't know these individuals or may get mixed up from time to time. It's understandable. There's a lot of names, there's a lot of characters, and there might only be so much capacity of what you can remember. So that's why I want to make it very clear and outline the situation before we get any further. So, in general, I don't know if all this unfolding is just bad timing or coincidence because I just so happened to have done a Dylan Rounds video yesterday, right? Just like how a few days before that, when I did the video on Chase Venstra, it led to a response from a whingy, whiny, impetuous individual known as Mr. X, misunderstanding the situation, and just demonstrating a prat of himself yet again. There's a few coincidences, I would say. It seems like I'm the catalyst once again. When I make a post, when I make a new video, if it's about a particular thing which originates from some of the problems or people who are the problems within these communities and cases, they pop back up out of the ground like ants or worms, okay? 
So with doing the Dylan Rounds video yesterday, I don't know if that triggered Polish Girl in Vegas or it's just coincidental timing, right? It's happened before in the past. It's, it's hard to think what it could really be, okay? But one thing that was acknowledged, okay, elsewhere, I'm not going to mention the named individual because it could cause further trouble, you never know. But one individual that was present in Fumble Nuts live stream, not yesterday, but the day before, supposedly, Polish girl in Vegas showed up in the live chat and was angry and going on about videos being deleted and stuff to do Jim Terry and all of that. So it seems like it actually started the day before I was brought into all this, okay? So there must be another trigger point as to why Polish girl has now decided to go on this campaign of calling people out and demanding answers, regardless of how established a channel may be out there. She demands answers. She wants answers, regardless of who she's reaching out to. The reality is, Polish girl in Vegas, you might not get many answers or replies, but I am here for a bit of clarity, okay? Now, this can apply to Polish girl, it can apply to ruffians out there, disruptors and other dark forces, it can apply to anyone. You can choose to listen and look, learn and understand, or you can ignore or use selective hearing and then complain afterwards. You choose which pathway you want to go down when approaching this video, okay? Because if you choose the impetuous attitude, well, it's gonna to lead to a dead end and it's not gonna go anywhere. If, in addition, I find out certain humans are hypocrites down the line, as you know, we follow the general procedure of hypocrites equal lost cause equal no hope, dead line, that's it, move on. As for this video itself, it should be a one-off as well as the response, so make sure to listen very carefully, okay? Will it be the response you want to hear? Maybe not, but I'm going to outline it as clear as I can and the, re the reality of the situation, okay? So with the backstory out of the way about Polish girl, about when it happened and what happened the night before, it's probably best to get into the material of it right now, which led to the direct post that she made on her channel. Let's head on over. So here we are on Polish Girl in Vegas YouTube channel. We can just do a brief introduction of what her channel looks like, what it's all about. Does it tell a story, a particular theme? She's got 15 videos, 235 subscribers. Um, there's a bit of a bio here. Joined 25th of June, 2018. The description. When I grew up in the country under totalitarian regime, I learned one thing. You never stand indifferent when others are hurting or being hurt. No matter what cost, courage changes the world, even if one little bit at a time. I'd like my channel to be the little change for the better in the world. Hmm. All clips on this channel can be used, reposted and shared in hopes that no family of missing will ever hire a person who will take their money to find their loved one. So I guess that's a, a possible reference to Jim Terry. Will not find their loved one and in order not to return the money, will attack the family who paid him, the mother's, father's, siblings, friends and victim um, himself or herself. Don't support evil by participating by standing quietly, by laughing. If someone is funny, they're funny without putting down another human being. And then there's the email, which is of public information there. Right. So the first bit, when I grew up in the country under totalitarian regime, is Polish girl responding to the US or where she grew up in Poland? I'd assume Poland. Okay. So a bit of a rough background may have had it tough, built a thick skin, grew up quick. 
and also developed what a form of empathy with others who may be hurt and damaged with time. Even at times, if Polish girl may not be the one who's being attacked, but she sees someone else being attacked, she wants to stand up for that individual. That could make them a good person, right? But I guess whilst you can stand up for things and highlight stuff when it's not right and when something's gone wrong or a person is doing wrong out there in the world, such as with the example here, the theme revolving around a private investigator supposedly helping a family of a missing loved one, taking money but not completing the job nor returning the money and later attacking family, friends, paid him and others in the background possible collateral damage. So it seems to be on the theme of Jim Terry, private investigator. Polish girl doesn't like Jim Terry for what Jim Terry has supposedly done in the past and with time. And we've kind of seen that within the Dylan Rounds casing community. Okay, bad things have happened. Others have got hurt. Some have been dragged in. Collateral damage has taken place. Okay, so that's uh, just a bit of a description with Polish girl, understandable. Video wise, what's this? Jim Terry, 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 Jim Terry. Now, besides me breaking the world record in closed captions for the amount of time saying Jim Terry's name in under 30 seconds. It does seem evident that Polish girl is what all about spreading awareness about Jim Terry, his supposed behavior, what he's done and what he said to people in the past and with time kind of archiving it. Am I correct in saying that? Right. So in the eyes of Jim Terry or the, the community over there, they would see Polish girl as an obsessed hater and a statistic. I'll come on in and still watch or participate in the background, maybe lurk at times to get a hold of footage and just show hate along the way. But in the eyes of Polish girl, an individual that's trying to do the right thing, trying to help others, trying to spread awareness. So you can see it from both sides, right? What about the playlist? Because this is where it kind of ties in. So the playlist is Internet Laughs at Mr. X, also known as Mark Terry, the brother of Jim Terry. Internet Laughs at Jim Terry, pretend PI. Private investigator Jim Terry hates all. Right. 62 videos in the bottom playlist, 37 there and three at the top. And that was updated six days ago, five days ago and one updated yesterday. So quite active. OK, you can see Betty Hayward showing up in one of the profile profiles or thumbnails there okay but where the the real focus is at today is the community section okay so there's some stuff below right to do with what yesterday's movie trivia right that's unrelated we're focusing here okay so let's just briefly look at the photos the photos appear to be of one of her playlist where she's added a range of different videos to it one says you are a beep with 14 million views. I don't give a beep, okay? If you don't shut up, dirty deletes from Kaylee. Bullhorn Betty, JLR versus whatever. In a no homo way, Betty Hayward. Right. So a range of different stuff. So I guess that playlist is the light-hearted side videos and responses in the name or against Jim Terry, Mr. X. So when bad things have happened, instead of fighting back in anger or in hatred or resistance, you kind of laugh it off and try and create a more lighthearted side. So you're turning a negative into a positive. Maybe that playlist has a few of those videos as example. Okay. What does that say at the bottom, though? Cartoon of the Week commentary on YouTube streets by Polish girl in Vegas. So as you know, the YouTube streets is quite a cringe-worthy line. But then again, it's probably a good name for a, a community out there that could be involved in true crime, missing people cases and miscellaneous stuff. And it's kind of like the, the bottom of the barrel 
on YouTube, right? It's the no holds barred, um, no limits, where all kinds of people can gather, criminals, ex-criminals and other dodgy people and normal people as well. But you mix them all in together, it creates a bit of a toxic environment, a bit volatile and it can get messy. And we've seen it with the Dylan Browns case as the origins of that is where it mainly started, okay? What's this one? Johnny Yarbrough, 1K View, streamed a year ago. Pre-show, Mr. X, Jim Terry TV. Pre-show for Mr. X and Jim Terry, a year ago. So I believe Johnny Yarbrough, at the time, one year ago, was in the presence of Jim Terry, Mr. X, when they were getting on well together. I believe Johnny Yarbrough was the first prospect in the eyes of Jim Terry, Mr. X, where they decided to make Johnny you know, grow on YouTube, give him that push, that initial boost. But obviously with time, parted ways due to different outcomes. Now, as for the comments there, we'll get to that shortly, but let's just look at the, I guess, the caption of this overall post, okay? So for further information, one day ago, it has been edited since. Polish Girl says, so in today's end of the week's bishing and dishing about tubes, with Polish Girl in Vegas, let's talk about YouTube creators that keep making videos and deleting them. And what is the reason behind it? Right, so you could read this immediately and think, why is Warlight Raph included in this post if it's the theme of deleting videos and covering up one's traces? I'll just make it very clear immediately. I don't delete my videos. Not in a dodgy way. I mean, has there ever been a time I've deleted videos like one, two, three, four years ago? Here and there, if mistakes were made in a video about a case, about a missing person case, if I messed it up, there's been times where I've uploaded a video and it glitched. It wouldn't play. It was stuck on a screen. About one to two years ago, I think, it may have been long, no, it couldn't have been longer, one to two years ago, when I was using iMovie to edit videos and stuff when I was covering Kenny Veach, that case, it really did mess up and it messed up the quality of the video, the visual aspect, it was terrible, it was all ruined, all that effort put in for nothing. I didn't know at the time, but people did when watching it and I thought, this is embarrassing, this is not a good look. So I had to take those videos down and then re-upload them so they weren't glitched, okay? But if we're specifically talking about, you know, over the year of 2022, mid-22, all the way up to 2024, when it comes to the Dylan Rounds case, I don't delete videos, okay? I might have the odd duplicate video where I've uploaded it twice because the first time round it wasn't working, the second time round, it worked. And then later on, fast forward, the first video that I uploaded ended up being okay in the end. So I just thought, well, I'll just upload that anyway because it is already there, it's public. And sometimes you can use it to archive, right? Because you can upload a video out of your control. YouTube could get involved or someone else in the background and try and take you down. One thing that I do want to make very clear, Polish girl in Vegas, before we go any further... There was actually a time in 2022 when a couple of my videos were reported for certain violations of privacy. And coincidentally, it was along the theme and topic of, you know, exposing Brookie for who she really was. Okay? Kendra Penn. Completely of all public information. It was all public. Okay? Now, research was done elsewhere, of course, but I did my own analysis of it myself and made a few videos just to spread awareness, to reveal fake people and to avoid any more confusion in the future because Brookie played a role in the Dylan Rounds case, spreading misinformation and saying that she was connected with Brenner and talking and meeting up. Obviously, Candice Cooley heard of that herself and exposed Brookie in one of those live stream interviews on Doug's channel in the past, okay? So at the time of when I did my videos about Brookie, later on, they were reported. 
YouTube notified me. And, you know, down the line, they could have been taken down. They could have been deleted. That would have been out of my control. I couldn't do anything about it. But it never happened because the reports were false. I did nothing wrong and it was demonstrated. The videos remained up, but attempts were made in the past back then. Okay. So for most part of it, at least to the best of my memory, not a single video has been deleted, right? Unless there was a duplicate, okay? Or if there was a glitch and it needed to be re-uploaded. That's about it, okay? If we're specifically talking about Jim Terry, Mr. X, if a response video was done there or some kind of analysis on them, or some kind of light-hearted video to get rid of all the negativity, all of those videos are still up, okay? And still counting when you look at the playlist and the, the bits and bobs along the way, okay? I think the best thing for reference, if you look at my Dylan Rounds playlist specifically, it's never gone down, it's always gone up, okay? At what, over 450 videos, maybe? I think, maybe 461. Now, I understand that's about Dylan Rounds specifically, and this is more so about, I guess, Jim Terry. Though, as said, there have been some Dylan Rounds videos, specifically to the case which I did make, which was referring to Jim Terry or some of those people with time. We can try and clear that up a bit later. Don't go anywhere. Let's just, uh, let's just finish off reading this post here, okay? So, besides the... Uh, making videos and then deleting them afterwards. What's the reason behind it? We will take this weekend to ask some creators questions, like why they keep Jim Terry's videos still up as if he's ever been a legitimate source of information. We will need some explanation from you. And that's calling out Zavgirl, Ick, whoever that person is, and Warlight Ref. Now, this person successfully tagged me as well, which is interesting. And what's down below? This is my playlist that I started two years ago called Internet Laughs at Jim Terry. Look at number of videos missing. This means 23 videos that were using freedom of speech to laugh at Jim Terry deleted their videos because they were either too scared, too concerned with monetization on YouTube, like they don't have a real life job, or number three, too stupid to understand fair use. Well, so it's don't pretend to be an advocate if your monetization gets in the way of your advocacy. If I could fight for three shitty clips, two year old, you could too, but you were too cheap. So the a holes deleting their videos is one side of things, but there's the other keeping Jim Terry's videos up. So families of missing ones, he ever contacts in the future will find positive videos about him. And I guess creates that deception, that illusion, where when people see the positive content, the families will think, oh, he's a reputable source, so we'll believe in him, we'll trust in him. Right, I guess I do understand where this is going with Polish Girl. Johnny Yarbrough, is there a reason those videos are still up to do with Jim Terry? I mean, it takes a second to change a description or a title or a thumbnail and make sure no family of missing find those videos' titles as positive, right? Why are those videos still up? Polish Girl has also tagged Ashley Martin Easterling, the mother of missing person Alex Easterling. Interesting. Anything else here? Hmm, no. Right. So do I respond back to this immediately? This isn't directly to do with me. We probably should look at the comment, right, in which she reached out to me. Why am I tagged in this? Polish girl says, because I felt like it. Right, so that's not the best response, I would say, just because you felt like it. You felt like tagging me in it. Right, so is there enough substance behind it, though, as to why you really did it? Polish girl says, and you're not the Queen of England. Well, no, I'm the king of England. Get it right. But no, that aside, being serious, 
you say. So people can tag you on YouTube if they feel like it. Right, so their initial post about why do people upload videos about the likes of Jim Terry, Mr. X? Why do they keep videos up which highlight Jim Terry in a positive light? Why are they shown almost like a form of support in that sense? Okay, I'm tagged within that, so that could apply to me. But Polish girls' initial response is, oh, I just tagged you in this post all about that because I, I just felt like it. So it, it's just, there's not, you know, there's the lack of confidence behind what you say, what you mean, and who you're applying it to. You need to rechange, restructure your sentence, okay, if you're being serious. Because, you know, we could end this conversation right now and terminate it because there's just not enough backing behind what you say. But, you know, I'll be patient and I'll continue reading. Polish girl does say, oh, and because I was wondering, remember my comments under your videos when I called you a tragedy pimp? You know, the ones you were repeating Jim Terry's theories about Dylan Rounds. So I guess the gay theory, for example, which was mostly attacking the murdered teenager's mother and father and dragging true Mud, the victim and his entire family. I was just wondering yesterday if you still have those videos up and taking YouTube money for it. Or did you have the decency to delete them? Okay. So what I'll do, I'll give my response in some format now. It might not be the response you want, but it will be the response I see that suits fit and is appropriate to the situation. Hmm. And then what I can do, I can talk more openly um, on camera again shortly afterwards. I said, I do find it easier to read the text as I analyse. It's just, it just how it works for me. Okay. So, Polish Girl says, do you remember when I called Warlight Raff yourself a tragedy pimp? Personally, I can't quite remember that. Okay. Exactly on the video. Well, there's been many videos, of course. So it had to be summarised. Polish girl is wondering, basically, the videos that I did about Jim Terry and analysing his theories and ideas about Dylan Rounds or the parents or Candice Cooley, are those videos still up on my channel? Yes. Just like every other video. See, the thing where you contradict yourself, Polish girl, and you will listen when I'm talking because this is extremely serious, okay? You go on about why are people deleting videos? Why, why, why? And yet you're also demanding for me to, what, take the videos down? You've contradicted yourself already, right? Well, you need to understand, Polish girl in Vegas, your perception is anyone that has videos up of Jim Terry and let's say it's supporting Jim Terry in a certain way, in a positive way, or at least highlighting his theories and ideas, even if they may be wrong, you think that's a bad idea because when other families down the line and victims of missing people may see those videos, if they decide to do research on Jim Terry before hiring him, let's just say, they're going to get the wrong impression. I understand that Polish girl in Vegas. But what you need to remember is the videos that I have done on Jim Terry, Mr. X, they've not really been that positive. I have mentioned strengths and weaknesses when it comes to Jim Terry, Mr. X, just like how I've done with Salty Pancakes, just like how I've done with some other people out there. It's to maintain balance, okay? Some people will have some good qualities but also bad qualities, okay? So it's just about balancing it out, consider it, considering majority of other people out there can't do that. And in a community where there's a lot of turmoil um, and it's everything's been flipped upside down, it's a complete mess, people are getting hurt, harmed, things are going gone, etc. What you need is at least somebody to maintain a little bit of control and stability. Because when there isn't any, it just completely goes downhill. 
where do you go? Some people are completely lost. The context behind my videos when it came to Jim Terry, for example, the gay fairy, I came to the conclusion and said it's likely BS. It's probably not true. I don't agree with it, okay? You would obviously know that, Polish girl, if you actually bothered to watch my videos. As said, I've got over, what, 450, 460 videos made on the case, covering it from different angles and perspectives. From the angle of Jim Terry, Mr. X, Ty Corbin, to Salty Pancakes, etc, etc. Now, I don't know if you get on well with Salty Pancakes, Polish girl. If you did... I'm surprised you're not having a go at him when Salty Pancakes was pushing the idea about crisis actors, for I was the crisis actor in the Dylan Rounds case, talking about a farming simulator and that Dylan's death never happened, right? What do you think about that? That seems a bit all over the place, right? Now, in addition to this ongoing dialogue, further down, you're wondering, are those videos, if they're still up, are they gaining in any shape or format? The reality is, no. And you know why? Because people don't watch those videos anymore. Nobody returns back to those videos. Nobody watches. The statistics don't go up. So it's generating nothing. And you know why? Because people aren't that interested in Jim Terry after all. You know, third party... There's been people out there that have said, I use their names or I make videos in the name of people as content because I've got nothing else. But some of the videos that I do are successful because it involves them or it's in the name of them. If people did their research and they looked at my channel, my most popular videos have absolutely nothing to do with the Dylan Rounds case and most certainly has nothing to do with Jim Terry we're salty pancakes and all the other dysfunctional people, okay? My most successful videos have over 100,000 views. It ranges from Viking war horns, ambient music created by me, original, in which one of the pieces was used in a short film based in India, okay? Some of my music was used for a film in India, okay? As for the other videos, more so Kenny Veach orientated, okay? The Kenny Veach missing person case, in which one of the family members, the sister-in-law to Kenny Veach, has thanked me for my coverage on the case and what I've done for it, okay? And they've got hundreds of thousands of views. So if I really, really desperately needed views, I would not be surrounding myself with disease-ridden humans. Therefore, there was an alternative point and reason to do what I did, to defend myself, to defend my channel, and to defend the Dylan Rounds case, to establish a form of stability so people don't get misguided or go down the wrong way. But in the midst of all that, it is a balancing juggling act in which one can cover multiple angles and perspectives. More about that later Polish girl, okay? So to revert back to my Dylan Rounds videos, whether it be Dylan Rounds only or the incorporation of Jim Terry and his ideas and theories within the case, those videos of mine where I highlight his points and I give my conclusion, which tended to be opposite to what Jim Terry was stating. So in a way, you could say I was going against his ideas. But Polish girl... You wouldn't know that because you simply haven't watched those videos or you've got a short-term memory. I do advise you to refer back to my previous coverage and watch it again, okay? As I said, here and there, strengths and weaknesses were mentioned and that's just to establish a form of balance, okay? So I can even give an example on the spot. So a strength of Jim Terry is constantly going at it even if it isn't for the right reasons or other people get hurt but that you know relentlessness that drive to keep on going that competitiveness driven through past history of one's self and life that's a positive on them but it may not be towards other people who get hurt but it's a strength what Jim has 
but weaknesses would be a lack of understanding. Jim Terry being an impetuous, one-dimensional individual that lacks the understanding of how other people can cover something and receive information from elsewhere and not them, okay? That's an example of a strength and a weakness. If you're the type of person, Polish girl, to go all in in a negative way, that could be considered a witch hunt. Now, Polish girl, you should know all about that when it comes to the Dylan Rounds case and Candice Cooley, who has been attacked in a witch hunt style over time. Justin Rounds completely left aside and not really harmed or attacked, right? But I did balance it out there as well, just like I've done with most people in the case, outsiders and insiders. I look at the strengths, I look at the weaknesses to establish the situation, to get a better understanding of who they are, what they're capable of, the pros, the cons, okay? And the case, the matter at hand as well. There is a procedure. My procedure will be different to other people, okay? So maybe that's answered some of your questions, but Polish girl, because you have involved me, we are not finished yet because I have a lot more to say. So I do advise you to stick around and don't go anywhere, okay? Click that off. Was there anything else to mention here? Because if this was to apply to me, Let's let's interpret it as it applies to me, okay? So, first of all, I don't delete videos, and especially when it comes to Jim Terry, Mr. X, and Salty Pancakes, and others out there. I don't delete my videos because it needs to be there archived to show the idiocracy of the situation and the weird ideas and theories pop up. Polish girl. Are you aware, Polish girl, that at one point in the past, the Shack Lady and Bob Farrell were obsessing and talking about that Chase Fenstra and Aviles kidnapped Dylan, put him in a horse trailer, tied him up, and then Dylan accidentally hung himself in the back? Have you heard of that before? Because that was mentioned in the past. I covered it on my channel, and I gave my conclusion to it, disagreeing with it. You will find, with time, there might be a pattern of disagreements by me when it comes to to other people. But in order to come to that conclusion, I have to cover a video talking about it, outlining it, the probabilities of it, then I reach the conclusion. And the video needs to remain up so then people can see it, okay? Videos where I highlight a point, even if it's by an unpopular individual or a dark character out there, and I come to a conclusion which goes against them, that's not in support of those people. That doesn't highlight those people in a positive light or in a false way. So, Polish girl, you have greatly misunderstood the situation here. And after all this time and all the videos that I've covered, and you lingering around on my channel here and there, you've failed to understand. So, there is more to say, okay? So, we're down here. What Polish girl has come to the conclusion of is those that may delete, take videos down, which deface Jim Terry or portray him in a bad way or, you know, make a joke about him. People that take that side down is because people are scared. They don't want to be on the receiving end by the wrath of Terry. Or that they're too concerned about their own channel that it could cause trouble on it. See, this is the thing, Polish girl, that wouldn't apply to me. I don't need to be scared of a situation if I know within myself that I haven't caused any problems to begin, begin with, nor have I gone against guidelines, okay? Out of all my time on YouTube, specifically, let's say, the Dylan Rounds case and coverage, when it comes to being reported, that's never happened nor successfully done when it's been aimed at me because I haven't gone against guidelines, okay? And even when it's come to the Jim Terry stuff, whether it be the impersonation, whether it be the voices, whatever it may be, depends how much you've seen of it, Polish girl. Not for one second do I have to think, oh, I'll take that down, I'll take this down because I might receive a strike. I can't. I've never used their proper content or their proper videos. I don't really engage in that, okay? There's other channels out there that have used a clip, a short clip of Jim Terry or Mr. X from a live stream, you know, one of those type of things. And how successful has it been? Well, 
short term. It's been funny. People have laughed. Others have. I, I don't really come across them, okay, because I'm busy doing more important stuff, serious stuff. But people will see the things and laugh and joke. Fast forward onwards, last few months when things escalated between Jim Terry and all the other communities and all of that going on, everyone's suddenly getting striked left, right and centre and supposedly shut down, channels terminated or whatever going on, attempts made and copyright claims made and filed. Well, that can't apply to me because I've not used their content. I can recycle, I can create my own stuff. I can do my own impression, right? Which no one else can do. I can look the most realistic to the original. I can put on the voice, which other people can't do, okay? So I'd have to worry about that area. That wouldn't be a factor to consider if I was to take down a video, okay? And what's that? Too stupid to understand fair use. Polish girl, fair use is extremely inconsistent on YouTube. You really need to understand that. If you've been around long enough like me, you would understand. You can create your own video. You can use some footage and material here and there. You can do it over commentary. You can cut brands and markers out. You can reverse the image. You can slow down the video. You can increase the volume. You can change the volume and it still won't be enough. At times, you can get away with it for as long as possible, but eventually, at some point, they will cut you down. YouTube guidelines are extremely inconsistent. The fair use policy is extremely inconsistent. There are many channels out there, much more established and bigger, that have followed the correct fair usage and have still been punished. Polish girl, you need to understand YouTube is an unstable place and it can go wrong at times, if not often, right? So let's say yesterday when we were looking at profiling evil and he had some footage, okay? Yeah, you could have got a screenshot of it. So you're not exactly using, you know, video footage, but you are using a screenshot that could still get you done in some way if they wanted to be petty. And because it had the copyrighted certificate on, I didn't want to risk it at all. Now, maybe when it comes to the news programs or the news broadcast under 30 seconds long, you might be able to get away with it at times and within reason, but still YouTube can be very picky and the copyright ID system, the automated one, is corrupt at times, right? Now, Polish girl, maybe you don't, you know, you're not as active on YouTube or a full-on creator, so you're not going to experience those issues, but if you were you would know, okay? So this is coming from a very experienced individual that has done it since 2013 onwards and has been more full on since 2020 onwards. So I strongly know what I'm saying because I've seen it, I've experienced it, and I've seen it happen to other people. Messy times, messy situations, adaptation needed with time, okay? Got to be more careful these days. It is, it can get tricky and it can be unfair, Maybe you could say YouTube are the ones too scared to take action or to help the creator out. You look at all those channels out there that may have been terminated at some point and have suddenly come back under a different channel or name. And yet it's the same people, banavading, yet they're still around. It's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? Hmm. Anything else? So... Yeah, deleting videos does not apply to me. I don't delete videos. I keep them all up to the best of my ability. And I said, if at any point in time, whenever, wherever in the future, if videos get taken down, likely it's out of my control, right? Because of the way YouTube are. You see it with comments online where people will leave a nice comment or an average one and it gets taken down deleted by YouTube, then I get the blame for it. It's not fair. It's out of my control. It's ridiculous, the situations, right? So Polish girl in Vegas and everybody else watching right now on Catch Up, we are not done yet. There are still things to refer to. So to reiterate, Polish girl labelled me a tragedy pimp. Okay, so in terms of the definition of that, I'm not quite sure. I tried looking online, couldn't find it. 
typical, isn't it? When you look for answers, you never get them. A assume is a tragedy pimp, an individual that participates in, let's say, a tragedy, acts in a certain way or creates unnecessary stuff to gain from it and benefit overall, whilst the victims and the ones on the inside of the case suffer truly. Is that your general thought of things? If it really is, then, you know, what's your perception of Doug No Thanks at a time of what he supposedly did in the name of Dylan Rounds, discrediting or in a insulting way and being around Jim Terry in the early days and then onwards Doug being in Candice Cooley's good books log books and doing live streams and it's all normal and friendly and all that and super chats are given in the background at the end of the day whether it comes to super chats or not that's given by the general public people that decide to do that because they want to you start telling them what to do that can come across as rude and disrespectful okay People show supports in different ways because they want to, just like how people show support in different ways to the case in hand and the victims that are caught up in it. Okay, there's different ways of looking at it. I think there's no other way to explain it, you know, um, Polish girls, so we'll just get straight into it. Okay, it's a bit cutting across, but it needs to be addressed. So on separate occasions with a range of different people, key people in connection with Candice Cooley, close friends to Candice Cooley, okay? Some of those key contacts have reached out to me over time, spread out from 2022 up to 2023, okay, and onwards. And what has been the general theme? Basically, acknowledging what I've done on the case with Dylan Rounds, including the variety of all the videos from the different perspectives and themes and people. Favourable, unsavourable. Unsavourable, probably not a word, unsavoury, okay? The dark forces, Jim Terry's, the pancakes, the Bob Farrell's, the shack ladies, the brookies, all of that, okay? I've covered it all and, you know, I followed the story, I've looked at the alternative stories and I've gave my opinions along the way. So that was acknowledged by close people to Candice Cooley. And similar things were said by independent different people coming to the same consensus separately. So there's establishment of consistency, you can say reliability, validity is all there. And they also mentioned that Candice Cooley is appreciative and, you know, approves of what I've covered, okay? Which was very positive to hear. I wasn't expecting, not once did I expect to be acknowledged or, you know, praised or anything like that. I've never expected it. When it comes to people on the inside of this case, I don't expect anyone to say anything good about me. The only thing I hope for, though, is that it doesn't cause any trouble, okay? When it comes to outsiders where trouble could occur, such as right now, I don't really give, you know, as much of a damn about it, to be honest. They're outsiders. They're not involved in the case, right? They're not affected by the case in that sense, as the family or friends are. But if family or friends or close people reach out or people on behalf of them reach out and say, you're doing well or we're thankful, that's positive to hear, right? The Christine Passe Parker case, whilst it's come to an end now and it was a bad ending, at the initial start of covering it, friends and family members reached out and said, thank you for covering it, you're doing well, etc, etc. When it came to the Kenny Veach case, sister-in-law to Kenny Veach reached out and said, thank you for doing this, you're doing well, I now understand why you look at the different ideas. The Kenny Veach case there was a turning point. So take notes of that uh, Polish girl, because there was the theory of Kenny is alive, here's proof. And then there was alternative material talking about other theories and ideas of within the desert. I was covering each side. By covering the opposite side, it could have been interpreted that the family member to Kenny Veach was saying, well, why are you going against the truth? Why are you siding over that way? You know, if this is it, you should follow it. But I said I like to cover every angle and perspective because if it hasn't been made 100% concrete 
and there is still more evidence to gather with time, it's still, you know, up for play to look in different directions until a true answer is found. And eventually they understood. They understood my language, wording, perception, methods and everything, which was very good to see. Didn't expect it, but it happened. So really, out of the three cases that I've covered, I have got 100% positive feedback from the important people that are involved in the case or connected to the important people involved in the case. So everything is all under control here. Now, Polish girl, I don't know what contacts you have or who you've reached out to or who you know of. I don't know about that. And as for your true backstory, I'm not quite sure there. Um, because I've not come across you much, because I've been focused on the case. Other people out there may know you better, but that might be because of conflict and ongoing stuff going there in the past, dragging on since. But if I had to give my, you know, afterthoughts now to my perception of you, okay, as a person, I'd say I'm disappointed in you. Polish girl in Vegas. Now, I said, many people around will say to me that I don't have to respond to a person like you. But as said, there's no breaking news at this moment in time, so it's all fine and under control. But yes, I am disappointed in you, Polish girl in Vegas, because you have failed to have done your research. You've come out with generalizations, which aren't even accurate compared to how I've done things with time. I don't know how long you've analysed human behaviour for. I've done it for over 10 plus years in counting, and obviously I'll be significantly younger than you, but I do have probably more experience in certain fields which you don't have the capacity for, okay? So whether it be a misunderstanding or not, what you have attempted to have done is dragged me into a certain situation which involves Jim Terry, and we know how that goes. Now, I don't know if it was a strategical manoeuvre or you just felt like it, which isn't a good enough reason, to be honest. You need to be, for definite, confident and certain behind what you say and how you apply it. How you've applied it here has been done inaccurately, making it invalid. Videos haven't been deleted. Check. Those videos that are up, which may highlight a person, don't you know, advertise them or highlight them in a very positive light. So it makes your point invalid. Videos that are still up are not growing, are not getting anywhere because people know, have no need to look at them at all, okay? The Dylan Rounds case, you can say, is dead in the waters, right? I've continued to cover it. Whilst other people out there have moved on, I've remained, okay? People you may know of, Polish girl, have moved away from the case on and off and may have not returned back properly since. From 2022 up to 2023, for almost an entire year, I spent almost every single day covering a video on the case, okay? Sometimes going round and round in circles where it could be the definition of insanity and other people losing their stamina, but it was to establish understanding and make sense of things and catch up on the spot to compare, contrast, and look at from the different angles and viewpoints. By looking at the different angles and viewpoints, it enabled me to create more coverage on the case and acknowledge more points, okay? And I can come to my own conclusion at times, right? But it's not all about me. Whilst, yes, this is my channel, this is my content, my videos, me talking, it doesn't have to be all about me. And you look at quite a lot of the videos, I've covered it from other people's angles and perspectives, right? If you only look at it in a one-dimensional approach, you're neglecting all the other important factors at hand, which should be acknowledged, addressed, whether you agree or disagree with them, okay? So I'd come to the conclusion, Polish girl, is you have an attitude issue, okay? Now, I don't care if you're tutting, rolling your eyes back or if you're about to hit that screen, you will stay, you will listen, you will learn, and that can apply to other people in the background. You come across as a bit of a, an erratic individual, 
You come across as an entitled person that demands answers from anyone out there. You demand answers, yet your initial point lacks a form of foundation and structure in what you say and what you mean. You're making almost like false claims about warlike raft. That's not a good look, okay? Would you call it slander? Well, we don't need to go that far, but you're assuming, you're interpreting that with what you said can apply to me, but when you actually look at my channel, what I actually said about people, my conclusion to things, they are not supporting people entirely. They're not all about praising or positivity and balancing it out with the negativity, okay? I said you go one-sided, you lose grip, you lose control, and things implode. Hence why it's happened everywhere else but here. When I say it's under control, it's under control. You come across as a person that doesn't have it under control. You may have been hurt. You may have been burnt by the fire in the past. You may have been on the receiving end of GM Terry, hence why you're a bit on edge, why you have a bit of an attitude, and why you're so passionate in general about spreading awareness of situations and problematic people out there. But whilst you're advocating it for that, you are a problematic person yourself. You're not doing yourself any favours, Polish girl. You, in a way, you're indirectly impacting your credibility. And that's not a good look, okay? There'll be some people out there that will be looking at you, Polish girl, and comparing you to Kathy and Axel, the ginger-haired individual that made false claims about warlike raff doxing their cat, when all I simply did was look at a comment which they publicly posted. Okay, so Polish girl, you are a one-dimensional, impetuous, idiosyncratic, entitled, ignorant individual, okay? You're a bit erratic, unstable, it's not a good look. You've missed out many key points, you've not done your research, but you demand answers. Most people wouldn't answer to you, but I took my time to do so. So I hope you appreciate of that at least. But as said, you need to cover it from each angle and each perspective, right? Whether it's right or wrong, you know, true or false, you look at it, you address it, you can clear it up, you can debunk it along the way, okay? done it in the Kenny Veach case, it was successful there. I've done it in the Dylan Rounds case, and it's been okay there. People have been misguided along the way. Now, if, and let me just have a bit of water right now to, you know, make my throat a little moist. Don't go anywhere. If you want to have a drink, you can. But if it's alcohol, probably not advised right now because you might misunderstand talking and uh, the conversations, okay? So let's do this under the mindset of you, Polish girl, your one-dimensional, impetuous, egocentric mindset. You have the entitlement and the idea, the audacity to tell other people what to do. So, you know, even though it's a misunderstanding here, the, the original concept is, in, a, in one way or another, you, who's not even a creator, not much, at least from what I've seen on YouTube, or at least on my channel, much of a contributor to the Dylan Rounds case specifically, there may be stuff you've done in the background, understandable there, but at least from what I've seen, and at least on the YouTube side, not as much. I've covered over 450, 460 plus videos on the case. I've single-handedly kept the case alive. And there have been times where I have defended Candice Cooley and put things into perspective with the lack of witch hunt towards, you know, Justin Rounds because Justin Rounds has made some mistakes too within the case, okay? Threatening behavior towards Don Hatley and stuff. But as I said at the time, all understandable it can be considered a bit reckless and it can harm the case in some way or another. Strengths and weaknesses with people while showing understanding. 
if Polish girl, you show a form of empathy through what you've learned in your time, in your past, from where you originate from and the things you have seen, was it, was it for anything or was it all for nothing? Because how you come across here is a bit of a prat, okay? An egocentric prat with the mindset and the audacity to demand for someone else to follow your orders. How dare you? You have no right to do so, okay? Whether you're acting on behalf of somebody else or not, you, Vegas girl, Polish girl in Vegas, <laughs> let's get that clear, Polish girl in Vegas, you're not directly involved in the case of Dylan Rounds. You are not the parents of Dylan Rounds. You're not a friend of Dylan Rounds. So for you to tell me what I can and can't do, excuse me, no, 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 that's not how it works here. I've always said, if a key individual ever reached out who's involved in the case, a real person, one of the family members, and they said, can you stop, please? I would. Never happened, not with a single case out there. The only people that have ever told me to stop are random nobodies and outsiders. I don't have to answer to them. I don't have to bow down to them. I don't have to listen to them, okay? Polish girl, you're coming across as an example of one of them, right? So whilst you might have your own little campaign in the background, your recent actions, behavior, and attitude does you no favors. If not, it makes you look more unstable and more untrustworthy. So congratulations there on making yourself a bigger prat than what you may have been already, okay? If you do want to continue like this, feel free to do so, but try and do a bit more research next time round, okay? And as said, following through the one-dimensional mindset you display, Polish girl, your concept is we need to erase history. We need to erase the past. We need to erase videos about Jim Terry, which talks about his theories and ideas. Even if it came to a conclusion that disagreed with his points, we need to get rid of it all. Such as with my videos, it all needs to go. You're all about the deletion of history. Understand, Polish girl, when you delete history, you remove those patterns, there's nothing to learn from history, okay? The records may not be there, but history itself can repeat itself. The importance of documenting and archiving stuff over time, people's outburst, changes in behavior by creators, audience members, I've extensively documented that on my channel. I'm even documenting you right now, Polish girl, as you are. So you've made the list, okay? Just like other people have. You remove key research on, you know, on a case. You remove, uh, let's say, silly ideas or manipulation. You remove all that. Where's the evidence to say that they did that, to say that they said that, said this and that, right? You need some kind of archives, you need some kind of documents out there to always look back on, to understand where did it go wrong? See, this is the thing, if you look at it in this sense. You apply it to the Dylan Rounds case, even upscale it to Dylan Rounds legacy. Polish girl, okay? Listen when I'm talking. Polish girl, if you truly care about the Dylan Rounds case, you'd approve or at least understand the importance of why videos need to remain up, okay? So you've got evidence to look back on as to what's true, what's not, and who are the real people to have caused the disruption and the trouble, okay? You erase all that, you've got nothing on those people, right? So <clears throat> maybe you're more so focused on the positive videos, right? The positive videos that highlight Jim Terry in a positive light, in a good way, and that's all it is. Well, I said, doesn't apply to me, so it's invalid. I don't need to respond back on that point. But 
if we're going back to the point about Dylan Brown's case, and if you really cared about Dylan, Polish girl, if you really cared about the family, right? If you do care, or maybe not, that like when it comes to Dylan Brown's legacy, how it comes down to family members like Candice Cooley, helping other families out there who are going through the same thing, or in the process of going through the same outcome, when Candice Cooley wants to be there to help and support others and etc., to kind of prevent those families out there going through the same fate as what Candice Cooley just in rounds did themselves, right? It's kind of the equivalent in a sense where a person could have been mistreated and then died and, and those higher up in authority who should have been more caring or in a position role to look after those people fell out of their grips and they failed sometimes maybe through an illness maybe through cancer and then like there's a certain law or a certain foundation or a charity or something is set up in the name of that victim that person that has passed away or been hurt damaged whatever and then supposedly attempts are made in the future to do better right and maybe with awareness too to prevent the past from occurring again to ensure that other people in the future that may go through something similar are slightly better off than the original person and what they faced. So like with Dylan Brown's legacy, okay? So, as we see here in the true crime community, specifically the Dylan Brown's case, which also ties in with the YouTube streets, there are other people out there that have come out with a theory. But this is the problem, Polish girl. And you need to understand language. You need to understand wording because obviously you failed here and how you've applied it to me. You failed there. So Polish girl, use this video as a stepping stone in growing as a person. You may be significantly older than me, but you lack experience. You lack understanding. Your perception, your peripheral sight is more tunnel vision and maybe that's driven through your passion, through your aims, through your past of other stuff. But what it creates is a crossroad, a four-way crossroad of conflicts. Is it a minefield of mind games? That might be something you're trapped within, okay? I don't know what's going on in your subconscious mind, but you may need to unpack, offload some stuff. You do need to calm down. You need to cool off. You need to think more before you speak or type. Because if you don't, you end up looking like an idiot. And you've demonstrated that today. Okay? And my video documents that. Okay? So, I am disappointed in you, Polish girl. Just like I'm disappointed in many out there. Right? Is there anything more to say? Maybe I can just reiterate a few more points to highlight the importance of it all. You need balance, so there is stability, and there is somewhere where people can go, where they won't be mind-effed, okay? Where they won't be deceived, where they can see the truth, where they can see the ideas, believe in it if they want to or not. And speaking of language and wording, okay? Polish girl... When it comes to Jim Terry, when it comes to that community and those that have left in the past, when it comes to Bob Farrell and Twin Mama and their community, when it comes to Shack Lady, when it comes to Jim Terry, the whole lot, okay, and the audience members, some here and there, how they addressed certain points, ideas, how they addressed theories, they weren't often described as theories they were ideas, but how they were worded was almost translated as a fact, as an event, which at times or often didn't actually happen. And that's where the problem is. And I've clearly outlined that in my videos, okay? I've done some psychological breakdown analysis. I've done some analysis of language and wording of how things can go wrong and what to expect. Important videos that need to be highlighted and addressed and remain up there. But Polish girl, you come across as a person that wants those type of videos to be removed. And if it is in the name or mentioned of Jim Terry or other people out there, you want that removed. So you want tutorials to be removed. You want guidance to be removed. 
you want key documentation and archive material to be removed, you're, you're going backwards, okay? You have a backwards mentality and a one-dimensional mindset. Your perception, lacking, impetuous, egocentric, maybe a bit bombastic, disappointing, Polish girl, very disappointing, okay? I don't know what will happen next or what one will say next or if there's any more backlash, but I said this video is one and done. You choose to listen or not. If you have selective hearing, that's not my problem. If you watch from start to finish, you will understand. If that's not good enough for you, well, look through my 460 plus videos then. Or better still, if you're going to complain in the future, watch the videos before you do complain or list your grievances, okay? Something does tell me that what initially triggered you was before you called me out. So maybe I was caught up in it, unfortunately. But I'm still going to respond back to cancerous behaviour as if it was my patient. A formal procedure like what I've done with many people out there and it will not change. When it's come to ideas and theories, okay, I label it as that in my videos. Even if it's not right, even if it's wrong, it's not misdirection. Because when people see the titles, the descriptions and the video itself, it's an idea. People can choose to agree with it or disagree with it. They're not being persuaded in a manipulative way because it's just an idea. An idea, an I, um, a theory, isn't 100% for definite. There's not enough evidence. It's not concrete. It's just an idea. People can think for themselves and come up with thoughts. And with time, it can be backed up with evidence or debunked. And that's what I've done on my channel. Okay. Now, in response to you, Polish girl, when it's come to other people's theories, like the Jim Terry ones, the Bob Farrell ones. It's come along at times through the, maybe the community and audience as Chinese whispers. It's slightly been modified and changed with time. But how it's originally said or stated, it's stated as a fact. When Jim Terry comes with the theory that Dylan Rounds is gay, Jim Terry isn't saying it's a theory, he's saying it's a fact. At the times of when I've done a response to those and Bob Farrell's and some other people, I've said it's a theory and an idea. Polish girl, I've been criticised for that. I've been criticised of downplaying it, okay? That supposedly it's a fact, it's an event. But I described it as a thought, a theory, an idea, nothing, nothing more, okay? Because there's not enough concrete evidence behind it. So that's not exactly in support or praise or positivity of the dark forces out there, is it, Polish girl? What I've done, it could be interpreted as I've undermined people, if you wanted to go that far. But I've actually downplayed and minimalized the supposed truth, which I've downgraded it to just an idea or a theory. But the reality of it all is these ideas well, these supposed facts and events originate to a theory and idea. It's just that other people out there have changed the words, manipulated the language to make it seem like it actually did happen when it didn't. But certain stuff per crust have changed the words and manipulated it to make it sound like it is going on. Well, in actual fact, it's just an idea of what could be going on. But when it comes to my channel, I can use words like it could be, it looks like, I think so, I could be wrong, but that's language of uncertainty. But it demonstrates honesty, right? It might not be the concrete nature of what people want, but at least people know where I may stand or where a video stands on an idea. And I said, when I've given my thoughts and ideas in response to other people out there about Salty Pancakes simulation, that Dylan Round's case murder never happened and he's not dead and crisis actors were used and farming simulator video game with sleuth mom in the background. I didn't agree with that. I thought, what the hell's going on there? And when it came to the idea of Dylan being gay, I thought, 
It's not a fact, it's, a, it's an idea, it could be a theory, and that I don't think it's concrete enough, and that is it justifiable of death? Don't think so, right? When it's come to Candice Cooley, I've said how it's a bit unfair how Candice Cooley is getting all the flank, getting attacked all over from the past, supposedly, and within the case. And then you've got Justin Rounds out there, who everybody bows down to, yet Justin Rounds used threatening language publicly on Facebook in the name of uh, Don Hatley, which, if Don Hatley was tied to the case or some kind of witness, or involved in other ways, it could harm the case. I don't know. You know, it can cause damage. You don't make, it, it can come off as threat, threatening language, and you can get done for that as well. You can get punished in certain ways. So, I said strengths, weaknesses it all out there. See, this is the thing, Polish girl, which you don't understand, okay? So listen once again. When it comes to warlike Raf, one of the most consistent people out there when covering the Dylan Rounds case, whilst most people walked away from it, if not everyone at some point, because they were either busy or they were busy covering the next popular thing. Whilst the Dylan Rounds case became dead in the waters and became very quiet and still is till this day, not successful, not generating really anything at all, okay? Generating views, awareness, but an attempt made to try and keep the awareness there to keep the case going, right? So even when it's failing, I'm still trying to keep it alive. Consistency in saying that because that's the reality. Polish girl, your consistency seems to be with, well, others would say hating on Jim Terry. My interpretation of it is you're highlighting the supposed dark side of Jim Terry. So other people know and other families know, etc. Maybe your campaign is more than what Candice Cooley has done. But then again, Candice Cooley is doing more important things, or supposedly is at least, and just in rounds of course too. So everybody has their roles and positions and motives. When it starts crossing on over and false claims are made, false interpretations, don't really do anyone any favours, does it? Now, hopefully people watched, understood, and that's mainly it. Could have gone in harder, but what's the point? Okay? I've come to a decent conclusion to who I'm dealing with here. Okay? You take what's been said on board, Polish girl. If not, further disappointing. Okay? I'm just wondering, is there any more final points to mention? Because sometimes I do like to come to a definitive conclusion or, you know, a tip to finish it all off. Hmm. All I would say is, Polish girl, your attitude problems, your entitlement, your behaviour, very unnecessary, unstable, slightly unhinged. Some could see it as worrying, I just see it as disappointing. With your behaviour and attitude, Polish girl, you're the type of person to cause harm in a case such as the Dylan Rounds one, considering how you've treated me, okay? Whilst your own ideas, your own thoughts are you're doing good elsewhere, maybe. But here, you're doing the opposite. As said, damaging your credibility and what you, what you originally stand for. You're about awareness, but in other ways, awareness in spreading a message and highlighting the dark side within people so others don't fall for it or get hurt. Well, my videos document the darkness in humans. My videos highlight beyond that other people out there, audience members as well. Okay? You take that away... It's like erasing history. That's not good. People need to learn. People can look back. New people can get involved, etc. Okay? As for the light-hearted videos against the darkness and the dark people out there, etc. That's done because it helps people. 
and those who may have been hurt or caught up in trouble they've come in to my channel and they said thank you i needed this video it helped now i don't know the full backstory behind you polish girl but what you need to understand is there have been videos over time serious or not which i have created at points where people have reached out and said that they're on the verge of suicide but my videos prevented that from happening but my videos help them i take that very seriously you come across as an individual that you want certain videos taken away. Are you supporting people committing suicide indirectly? Because if there's certain videos you want taken down, yet those videos that I created in the first place were either educational or edutainment, and it helped people along the way, and it helped people struggling, you take those videos away or they never existed in the first place, there could be some people out there right now that may have committed suicide, and, you know, if some people out there wanted to be twisted, they could say, well, that's on you, Polish girl. You took videos away. You took people's lives away. You know, we, we can, you know, use wording at times specifically. What I would say specifically, though, videos out there I have created. They've helped people in many different ways. They've also been acknowledged by key individuals out there, such as Candice Cooley, such as people in the Kenny Veach case, the Christine Passe Parker case. I'm not going to listen to a jumped up little entitled beep person that demands for answers left, right and centre and demands a resolution. It's under control here. OK, is it for you? I don't think so. Videos have helped. Videos have kept people sane. Some videos have kept people happy, okay, within the right reasons and appropriate levels. You take some of that away, or if it never existed in the first place, some people could have slipped away. You know what I'm saying? So once again, upon that further dialogue, Polish girl, I am disappointed in you. Let's hope my disappointment doesn't become beyond measure. Let's hope it's not immeasurable disappointment because then we will have a problem, okay? So you continue to do whatever you do, try and get a grip of yourself, and if you do start dragging me in the future, I'm going to come down to a potential conclusion. You know what, I'll even do a bit of a prediction right now. We might as well add that in whilst we're here. My prediction is there may be humans out there that will want to latch themselves onto me or drag me into things, okay? Whether it be because I'm a bigger channel, so people think they can use me just because I'm more established and they can be the voice or be seen as a voice and then I promote them. If it's in natural ways, no, that's not going to happen, okay? I wouldn't be surprised if humans, maybe in the future or so, when things go a bit dry or there's no one else really to target, you end up trying to drag me or tag me or mention me in things even when it's not relevant, just like how most of it, or if not all of it today, was kind of irrelevant, okay, and invalid claim towards me. Ridiculous, isn't it? Mm. Now, I said some people could say, oh, don't do this video, it's not needed, or you're wasting your time or you're suffering because of it. No. I mean... At this moment in time specifically, there wasn't breaking news, so I just thought, I'll do this, why not? Just throw it in here and there. If it, came, if it caused that much problems or trouble, if, if it genuinely got in the way of the normal routine and important stuff, then yes, there would be a problem, but that isn't the case here. It's all under control. When people want to try and cause drama, conflict, or play mind games, psychological warfare, Polish girl, it's best not doing it with me, okay? I've come across your psychopath in the past and actually came back on their hands and knees begging and... It really didn't work. They tried everything. It did not work. I've come across a range of people. I've come across always some, if not most, stubbornest humans out there in real life. Okay? In a very short span of time on this earth, I've come across a range of different people in real life online. Okay? Psychological warfare. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Okay? Your language, your wording needs improvement. Your attitude needs work. Okay? Polish girl, are you going to try to be a better person for the future? You still have a lot of learning to do. Polish girl, are you going to try to think before you speak next time round? I hope so. Would I say there's any ounce of hypocrisy here? 
maybe. A bit of hypocrisy, a bit of contradiction. To revert back to the initial point earlier on, you demand and question as to why people take videos down that they shouldn't be, and that people only do it because they're scared and covering you know, themselves, their backs, they don't want the channel harmed, they don't want to receive strikes, cowardly behaviour. You demand, in a sense, about why are people taking it down, that shouldn't be the case, they should remain stood up, tall and proud. But then at the same time elsewhere, you're saying that, you know, you probably should take that video down. So you want videos to remain up, but you also want videos to be taken down. Make your bloody mind up. There's some hypocrisy and contradictions there. And as I said, once I sense that in a human, they become a lost cause to me. Okay? So with everything being said and done, I hope you've learned something, Polish girl. You have a lot of learning to do, but I'm sure you have the time to do so. Okay? As for anybody else that may be watching in the background, contacts, fumble nuts, salty pancakes, anybody else out there that, I don't know if there's any backlash, just watch this video carefully. Watch my mouth, don't get too obsessed with the lips, and just understand what's being said. I know there might be some out there that want to give a tug on the hair or analyse my back, but that can, you know, wait for another time. If you did watch this video late on Catch Up, whatever, rewind back to the beginning again. So I would say with that all being done, hopefully you found the video interesting, and for those in the background, Hopefully you found the video okay, but this needed to be done and there was time for it. There was an appropriate place and an appropriate time and that was demonstrated, okay? So feel free to share the video so there's more awareness, so people see more behavioural shifts within some, like Polish girl. People out there may say Polish girl was reckless in the past. Well, I wouldn't have known, I've only seen it now, okay? But it is what it is. So Polish girl, I guess that appears to be it. This response has been conducted and done somewhat formally. It's now time to terminate this conversation. Goodbye and good night.